Hello, and welcome to episode 7 of Sarastro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint Darth Vader from Fantasy Flight's Imperial Assault. Vader presents two main challenges, how to paint a good black, and how to paint a lightsaber. This video aims to present just one way of achieving these things that is both reasonably simple and effective. However, it's fair to accept that we'll be investing a little more time in painting Vader than we have for the regular troops. Here are the main steps. We'll begin by priming Darth Vader with a black spray-on primer. We'll carefully highlight the armour using a blue-grey tone. We'll also apply a dark wash to the leather sections and paint the additional chest details. Next, we'll paint the lightsaber using a build-up of layers from red to silver, which we will follow with some red lighting effects for the armour, achieved quite simply using a thinned red glaze. Our finishing touches will include some retouching, selective glazing, and we'll be applying some matte and gloss varnish before having a look at some optional basing ideas. Let's begin. Before priming the miniature, we ought to check to see if the lightsaber is in fact straight. If it isn't, we can quite easily correct this by applying some heat to soften the plastic, allowing us to straighten it out. This can be done with hot water, but I've chosen to use a hairdryer. A quick blast of just a few seconds should be enough to make the plastic pliable. We then gently correct the lightsaber and hold it in place until it dries. After gently shaving off any visible mould lines, we're ready to spray the miniature with the black primer. And now we're ready to begin painting. Although Vader is dressed completely in black, the texture and reflectivity of his outfit does vary considerably, which we want to try to capture in our painting. We're going to paint the outfit in sections, beginning with the leather part. Our plan is to apply a dark grey base tone with a few highlights, followed by a black wash to shade the recesses and darken the area back down. We're going to apply a base tone using a mix of around three parts black with two parts rust grey. We want to keep the paint fairly thin so as to preserve the details. A couple of thin layers may be needed. We're then going to highlight this area by simply adding two additional parts of rust grey into our mix. We should aim to give the strongest highlights to the knuckles and fingers, and perhaps the edge of the gloves, the elbow and knee area. We can highlight up in a couple more stages by adding more of the rust grey into the mix. You could even have a go at articulating some of the more prominent raised stripes on the legs. We carry on lightening our highlights until we end up with a final small hit of pure rust grey, but this should only be used in tiny amounts for the most prominent highlights. Once dry, we're going to apply a black wash to the entire area to darken the recesses and soften the overall look. We might reapply a final highlight to the hands to bring back a little contrast. Next, we're going to highlight the cloak, helmet and boots. To achieve a smooth transition from the existing black, we're going to use a dark mix of around two parts black to just one part rust grey. With this mix, we now apply our first highlight, which will just barely be visible. To help decide where to place our highlights, we might want to take a couple of photos, 
with a roughly overhead light source to use as reference. Bear in mind that we will be adding some additional lighting effects to simulate the glow of the lightsaber later on, which might look something like this. As we've thinned the paint, we can add a second layer to subtly strengthen the highlight. Once we're done, we now add a couple more small portions of the rust grey into the mix, and begin adding the next layer of highlight. We carry on building up the highlights in this way, using as many layers as we have the patience to apply. Here I'm using a 2 to 3 part mix, with 2 parts black and 3 parts rust grey. This is the brightest highlight that I'm going to use for the back of the cloak, as it's the least reflective and darkest part of the clothing. Due to the extra light being given off by the lightsaber however, I'm going to add a slightly lighter tone to the front of the cloak, maxing out at a 1 to 3 ratio of black to grey. For the lighter highlights, we're going to concentrate exclusively on the helmet, which is much more reflective, allowing us to be more extreme with how light we can go. I'm creating two large areas of highlight, one at the upper front area of the helmet, and one at the rear. We continue adding rust grey into the mix, carefully building up the layers of highlight. This stage reminds us that miniature painting is a hobby that both demands and rewards patience. Here I've built up to a pure rust grey highlight. A couple of bright highlights should also be added to the eyes. These can go pretty much anywhere you like, as long as you try to keep both eyes even. We shouldn't worry if we're not completely happy with some of the highlighting, as there will be time for some corrective retouching and glazing later on. I would now go even further, either by adding some white to the rust grey, or, as I'm doing, switching to some Fenrisian grey. We may add one or two even more extreme highlights later on, but for now, let's paint the chest armour. Although Vader's chest armour doesn't actually have a metallic finish, it often catches so much light that it gives the appearance of doing so. So I'm going to mix in a little iron breaker with my black and rust grey mix. We then highlight the armour just as we did the helmet, but leaving the thin downward stripes a lot darker than the rest. For the lighter tones, I'm adding some additional rust grey, with a small amount of the iron breaker. Gradually getting lighter towards the lower part of the chest armour can look very effective. We can also give highlights to the edge of the chest panel with this mix. 
we continue lightening the mix to build up our highlights. Here we can see that with the brightest highlight added, we've created a nice bit of contrast between the reflective chest armour and the more matte leather beneath. With the highlighting done, we now paint the silver cloak chain and belt buckle. For this, we can simply use some pure iron breaker, which we'll follow with a black wash later on. Although I've left the lightsaber handle until later, there's no reason not to paint it now using the same tone. Whilst that dries, we can go ahead and paint the chest panel. The precise colours of the lights on the panel do vary from film to film, so you could use either green or blue for the light in the upper right of the panel. I'm using Calador Sky. A single dab with your smallest brush using only slightly thinned paint is all we need. And we do the same for the red light beneath it. I'm then going to use some pure Fenrisian grey for the additional lights that appear in two rows, one on the left and another along the bottom. We now give a straight non-oil wash to the chain and belt buckle and lightsaber handle if you've painted it to shade the gaps and dull the finish. We might also deepen the shadows slightly in the chest armour whilst we're at it. With those details taken care of, we're now ready to paint the lightsaber. The lightsaber presents a somewhat impossible challenge, as in the movies they have a bright inner glow when viewed from any angle. The best we can do is simulate that effect from just one angle, which should be a roughly 45 degree angle at the front. We begin by laying down a pure white undercoat to ensure we get the brightest finish when we begin painting the red. I'm using Keramite White to save time as it has a high pigmentation, but any white will do provided you end up with a clean, solid finish. With this and each subsequent layer we add, we're always looking for a smooth, even finish, and we'll mostly be dragging the brush lengthways down the lightsaber. Now we add a strong red base coat to the entire lightsaber using Mephiston Red. Two layers will probably be needed to get nice flat coverage. Next we apply some Evil Sun's Scarlet. This can also cover the entire blade. Now we use some Wild Rider Red, but only to the upper front edge of the lightsaber. It's important that we keep the paint fairly thin to achieve a nice smooth transition. When applied in thin layers like this, you'll find the paint dries pretty quickly, and we can go ahead and add multiple layers without having to wait too long. Once the colour stops getting any brighter, which took me about four thin layers, we need to mix a brighter tone. To do that, we're going to add some Rune Fang Steel to the Wild Rider Red. Once it's applied, we can see that the metallic element begins to create the shimmering inner glow effect that we're after. Two thin layers should be applied. Then we add some additional Runefang steel and repeat the process.
We keep adding runefang steel in this way until we end up with a final thin slither of pure runefang steel. I ended up adding around four brushfuls of the runefang steel before ending up with my final pure strip of silver. If your inner glow effect ends up a little too thick, or your layers aren't as smooth as you'd like, you could brush on a little red glaze to darken the edges and smooth things over. Once we're happy with the look of the lightsaber, we can now add a subtle red light effect to the parts of the figure that are closest, to create the illusion that it's actually giving off some red light. For that, we're going to use a simple red glaze, but because I want the effect to be quite subtle, I'm going to thin the glaze using a roughly 2 to 1 mix, with two parts Lamian medium and one part blood letter. You could use water to do this if you like, although the results may be a little patchy. Or just apply the glaze neat, provided you don't mind quite a strong red effect. With our thinned glaze we now begin giving a gentle red light effect to most of the left side of the miniature. We're aiming to provide a thin layer of glaze and trying to avoid letting it pool in the recesses. Once the first layer is dry, we can add a second, and a third, building up the concentration the closer we get to the lightsaber. For the areas that are closest, which means the front of the cloak, we can build up to a stronger shade using as many layers as we want to produce the desired level of red. I've tried not to go too far however, so as not to allow the cloak to become too bright, and found that four layers gave me a tone that I was happy with. This is a beautifully simple but effective step that really helps to sell the illusion that the lightsaber is emitting light, but also gives us a way of introducing additional colour to the miniature, helping to add interest and character. We're now ready for some finishing touches. Before we give Vader a protective spray of varnish, we might like to address any areas that may need retouching. I'm not too happy with the highlights of my Vader's eyes for example, so we'll be repainting them to achieve a more even look. Additionally, you could use a thin black glaze of around three parts medium to one part black paint to smooth or tone down any highlights you might not be happy with. To add a final boost to the contrast, I might add a couple of very small pure white highlights for the brightest parts of the helmet reflections, the eyes and one or two other places. I'll be replacing the entire base for my Darth Vader with a more scenic alternative. If you'd rather leave the base as it is, then this would be the time to paint it. Once we're happy, we give the miniature a coat of matte varnish, followed with some gloss varnish for the helmet, chest armour and boots and perhaps the lightsaber as well. I'm now going to remove Vader from his existing base. Some figures can quite easily be sliced off their stands, with Vader it might be safer to firstly cut away most of the base with some cutters. We can then more easily cut away the remaining bit of stand from beneath his feet. We may need to gently slice or file the bottom of the feet to ensure they're as flat as possible. Now let's prepare the new base. I'll be using these 25mm resin bases made by a Polish company called MicroArt Studio. I'm going to paint the base before rebasing the miniature. We'll begin by giving it a black spray.
We then try the figure out on various bases to see which we like the look of. We'll then apply a fairly heavy dry brush using Mechanicus Standard Grey. We'll follow that with a lighter dry brush of a 50-50 mix of Iron Breaker and Rust Grey. A little null oil could be used to create a subtle shadow effect, focusing on the centre of the stand. We'll follow that with a lighter dry brush of pure iron breaker. And now we can paint the edge of the base. Finally, we'll use some of our thinned red clays to add some lightsaber glow to the ground focusing more heavily on the area that will be closest to the blade. We add three or four layers to build up to the desired tone. We can now finish the base with a matte spray for protection, before using a dab of super glue to fix him in place. This gives us a reasonably strong bond, but the miniature will inevitably now be more fragile, which is something worth bearing in mind when deciding whether or not to rebase the miniatures in this way. Our Darth Vader is now complete. Thank you so much for watching, and especially if you have liked the video or subscribed to the channel. Stay tuned as we'll soon be turning our attention to the heroes, as well as the mercenary faction not to mention the latest wave of allies and villains. Happy painting!